with Amy Spindle Spun Yarn and I just wanted to film this little uh, unboxing video. I can't wait to show you guys what's inside. I am really excited so let's get to it. <laughs> Might have to cut that part out. is taped up real good. There we go. Alrighty, I hope you guys can see that pretty well. There it is. Can you tell what it is? So this is supposed to be a 19 micron merino fleece. And it was shipped by Andy Mick Andy McMurray. Wanted to make certain I got his name right. Anyways, I'm just gonna like pull out a lot. Ah, uh, look at that. So there's definitely some dirt in it. So I'm not sure if this fleece was coated or not, um, but I do know that it was skirted uh, before I got it because he talked about measuring the skirted weight. Um, it's obviously unwashed, it smells like lanolin, but it, oh that actually smells really good. I have gotten a sheep fleece before, like a free one, and that thing stunk. <laughs> so, um, let's see if I can zoom out so you can see the entire thing a bit. There you go. But this actually, I don't know, it doesn't smell like a barn at all. I'm actually really impressed. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of veg matter in it. So, I think I found a second cut right there, but that's to be expected. I mean, you're not going to get a fleece without second cuts in it, even if they are skirted. And I don't know how heavily he skirted it, but man, just pull one of these little locks out. And I'm pulling it, actually, let me try to pull one from the tip end. Here we go. I mean, it definitely, I can kind of feel the lanolin on it. The people in my um, spinner group on Facebook talk about how hard it is to scour the lanolin out of um, merino, but I mean, it feels a little maybe kind of sticky almost. Not really sticky, but I don't know. If you've ever felt lanolin before, you kind of get an idea of what it feels like. But look at the crimp. How many crimps per inch is it? Like one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's about eleven to twelve crimps per inch. I'm judging the inches by my finger, but man, this is a strong fleece. Oh, that's a nice pin. Yeah, he gave me a good fleece. But yeah, it's a 19 micron merino. I This is the first fleece that I have actually paid money for. All the raw fleeces I have ever had, I have gotten for free. So I'm really excited about this one. Uh, it's intended for a project for my sister. Man, I wish I could go ahead and unroll it right here, but I think we're going to have to wait till tomorrow for that video where I unroll it and actually see it in all its glory. 
I'm hoping that I can kind of tell where the parts of the sheep are. Um, it looks like it was, for most part, rolled tip inward, which tells me that they probably kept the sheep intact for most part. So I don't want to be pulling out too many locks to, like, look at each individual, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm only seeing a little bit of, like, dirt or mud near the tips, which is pretty typical, so... I'm guessing it was probably uncoated, but he just did a really good job of making certain there was no veg matter in it. Or at least there's no veg matter in the part that I can see. So, but yeah. And I think that when this washes up, it's going to wash up a very true white. Just judging by how white it is already. Man. Mmm, that smells so good. I mean, it doesn't smell like poop or barn dirt. It literally smells like the lanolin serum that, you know, a mom would use when she's breastfeeding. That's exactly what it smells like. like. And these finer wools are supposed to be very rich in lanolin. Man, I wish I could just take that out right now. Oh feels so good to my hands. It's so squishy and soft. And I intend to blend this with alpaca. And it feels very similar to alpaca. The main difference is obviously this has lanolin in it and alpaca does not. But also the amount of crimp that is in here. Let's see if I can zoom in. I mean look at that crimp. I mean, there's a lot of crimps per inch, and you don't get that with alpaca, not even with wakaya, so. Man. Oh, I didn't expect it to smell this good. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. But anyways, that was the squishy package I wanted to show you. And I've got to say that Andy McMurray is quite the salesman. Uh... I had really only wanted about five pounds of fleece, but um, there was like, I think a pound and like 0.8 of a pound left over to this fleece once, you know, he got, you know, five pounds and he was like, hey, I'll give it to you for $10 for the last pound. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. So I've probably got way more than what I need, which is a good thing because that will give me a lot of wiggle room to uh, experiment with. Man, I mean, I may not even need to take this to the skirting table, but I, I do want to lay it out and look at it. But yeah. So anyways... I got an entire fleece on my first purchase, and I'm actually, at least from what I can see in the box, I am really pleased with what I got, really impressed. And it looks like the lock length, well, I'll just pull out this lock, but you see, if this line here marks an inch, and that line on my hand there marks two inches, and then three inches is about there, four inches, so it's about a five inch lock, which is about the length of the alpaca that I want to blend with, so that's really good. And I'm just really impressed. I don't think I'll ever settle for a free fleece again. <laughs> As this is just amazing. And, you know, anything made from Merino is just going to be luxuriously soft. And possibly somewhat waterproof, as it is, you know, very difficult to scour all the lanolin out. And lanolin is not only really good for your skin, assuming you're not allergic to it, but it, it does have waterproofing qualities to it because it's basically a wax, you know. Some people describe it as oil or grease, and it can feel 
greasy, but it is technically a wax. And that is something Merino is known for. And then a lot of the other sheep that are out there. I mean, there's a few breeds that can produce wool as fine as Merino, but Merino is the most well-known. And other breeds are probably going to have a little bit of that itchy factor to it because, you know, they're a little bit coarser, they're a little bit more scaly than Merino. And that's why, you know, most of the wool sweaters you get uh, commercially made are so rough because partly it's the process they used to create that sweater was probably really harsh to the wool in the first place. And then on top of that, you know, they're not being really picky about the grade of wool that they're getting. So, you know, if you've been turned off to wearing wool, you know, because of something you bought from the store, I highly recommend that you make yourself one from some hand-spun, breed-specific yarn like Merino. Anyways, that's all that I have to say about that. I will hopefully show you some more of this tomorrow when it's all relaxed, when it's all spread out in all of its sheepy glory. And man, I gotta smell it again. That is just amazing. I am so impressed with how like clean it smells. Like it doesn't smell like soap. It just I mean, it smells almost medicinal, and again, lanolin is used in medicine. It's used in a lot of lotions, so, yeah. Anyways, I've babbled on enough. Uh, I will see you again outside on the skirting table on a different day. Bye-bye for now. So, anyways, I am here with the fleece that I unpacked yesterday. And this is only three quarters of the fleece. There wasn't enough room on my skirting table to spread the whole thing out. Um, and it looks like he packed it in sections. So the reason I wanted to do this was to get an idea of how dirty the fleece is. And it is a dirty fleece. Um, the majority of the dirt is at the tips, but you can also look at the butt end and you can tell how white the fleece is supposed to be. So I'm guessing this was an unskirted fleece. Um, in some of his photos and videos, I've never seen a jacket on him. The fleece was skirted. Um, that much I do know. It was unjacketed. Excuse me. Uh, another thing I'm doing is I'm looking for pieces of vegetable matter and hay. I don't know if you can see that, but... And I was also going to try to get an idea for where the shoulders were and where the rear end is. And to be totally honest, I can't do that because uh, the fleece was shipped to me in sections. And I don't have enough eye for fleece to be able to tell the parts of the fleece. But my guess is based on the shape that I'm seeing here is to me this looks like it was probably a tail right here so this is probably the back end of the sheep what I might have in the box still and as you can see I mean the whole thing was stuck into this box and I've only got like a third or so of the fleece in this box at the moment so yeah I got a lot of fleece. <laughs> and if I'm basing things off of shapes, I mean it looks like at either end here might possibly be shoulders, but again I really don't know. And part of my goal was to see if I could figure out which parts were the best part. Um, but from what I'm seeing it looks fairly uniform. Um, there's not a ton of veg matter. Here's kind of a poopy lock right here. So I'm hoping you can see this fairly well. There's really not a ton of veg matter, you know. A few little poopy tags, a few pieces of hay here and there, but really 
overall this fleece is looking really good to me. Um, it is dirty. Again, the sheep was unjacketed. <laughs> Looks like this one has a little bit of dye on it. Another thing I'm looking for are um, any leftover second cuts. Because he did send me a skirted fleece, so I shouldn't be seeing a whole lot of poop or uh, tail bits or anything like that in it. Um, just a little bit of veg matter. And again, these tips are fairly dirty, but I think that when I scour it, it's really just going to wash right out. Um, here and there, just pull a lock out and compare locks from different sections of the sheet. So I don't know if you can see that. And then, of course, if I pull a random lock out here, it looks like they're a little bit thinner and finer on this end. So this might be more of the prime than that. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. But it looks like everything is fairly uniform. There is a slight difference in staple length here. So this is a longer bit, but it's not such a difference that I think it's going to cause a problem with, you know, drafting or whatever. This might be a six inch, whereas this might be a five inch. Uh, four and a half inch, maybe. But what I'm seeing looks pretty good. It looks like a good fleece. Some parts do seem a little bit... Some of the locks do seem a little bit finer than the others, like this is a really fine lock. Like I can't even count the crimps per inch with that one. Uh oh, here's some crackling with just a gentle pull. So that one had a weak tip on it. So. So I know that some of the thinner locks like this are probably going to have weak tips, but I'm not losing a whole lot of fleece, which is my main concern, is I don't want to lose a whole lot. And it's important to go ahead and pick vegetable matter out at this stage because it will not scour out. The only way to remove veggie matter is to pick it out by hand, like I'm doing right now, or to comb it out later. There are two main methods of preparing fleece for spinning, and that is by carding or by combing. And because this is a merino fleece and it's really long, and I plan on blending it with alpaca, I'm going to be combing. Uh, I tend to be a better spinner as a worse than style spinner. And I think the project is that I've got in mind, or that I should say my sister has in mind, is probably going to be better suited for a worsted style yarn. Now right now I've got the fleece so that it's tip end up, but once I pick out some of the veg matter, I'm going to want to flip it over and look at the underside and uh, try to get rid of some second cuts. The worst of the veg matter, the dirt and stuff that I don't want in it is going to be at the tip end of the fleece. And again, the whole fleece just looks really uniform to me. So I probably don't have to be too picky about which part I experiment with. And I'm just pulling out a lock because I found one lock with a weak tip. Oh, this lock has a weak tip. I'm not having to pull very hard to break it here. Yeah, that's a bummer. But it is just the tip. I think, maybe. Okay, that wasn't really a true break. So that's one thing I'm going to keep in mind, is once it's washed, I'm going to see how many of the tips actually end up breaking on me. Ooh, 
Yeah, hearing some crackling with that one. It is a 19 micron merino, so there's a good chance that it came from a young animal, possibly a lamb. I can't tell just by looking at it though. And lamb fleeces in particular are known for having weak tips. But, so that's something I'm gonna to have to keep in mind when combing. I probably will not be too worried about trying to pull the tips off prior to combing, just because I know that I have enough length that even if I do lose the tips during combing, um, it won't be a big issue. Now this tip is probably going to be weak because there's a little bit of mud or poop holding that together. So for all I know, this could have come from the tail. In fact, that whole lot might be a little weak. I'm just going to find another random lock to test. I heard a little bit of crackling, but that tip actually isn't coming off. So there might be a few weak hairs in it, but it doesn't necessarily mean the whole lock is weak. And again, this is a really fine fleece, so any of the locks would break if I pulled hard enough. So I don't want to be like tugging and tugging and tugging because I know that as a fine merino fleece, it's going to be slightly on the delicate side. And that's another reason that I want to comb it, because combing is a little bit gentler on fleeces than carding. So that means I'll have less breakage. Anyways, I know I'm jumping around a bit on the screen. I don't have my uh, handy dandy cameraman with me to help me uh, turn the camera on and off as I need. So... I'll still be talking about the same stuff, but I know it looks a little funny seeing me jump around on the screen like this. I found some second cuts that I thought I may as well go ahead and pull out. Because even though I'll be combing and that's going to get rid of the second cuts anyway, it can still create a neppy yarn and I don't really want to you know, wash the neps into my fleece. It smells good, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, if you've never smelled a sheep before, a nice, relatively clean sheep like this, you know, high lanolin fleece, it actually kind of smells like medicine, but the good kind of medicine that you know when you apply it, it's it's going to make you feel better immediately. It smells like that kind of medicine. Um, yeah. It's so pretty. So pretty. Anyways, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of veg matter. So I'm probably just going to stop picking because I could stand here and pick stuff out all day long and you know there would still be bits of stuff in it. So and you know it, again it's a relatively clean fleece as far as veggie matter goes. There's obviously some dirt and stuff caked in the tips but you know sheep rolling them up what they do. So, anyways. So anyways, I am going to take it. And I'm going to carefully lift it up, trying not to destroy the fleece. He actually packaged it in sections, um, which is one of the reasons I can't really tell which end is which. Um, if I was a little bit more familiar with fleece, like if I've ordered, if I had ordered whole fleeces before and ever, you know, got one that wasn't 
broken into sections like this, I could probably tell better. Now you'll notice that this side already looks whiter and cleaner. That's because the stuff next to their skin, the oils, actually has a tendency to push the dirt um, out into the tips. And again, it's mainly the tips of the fleece that have contact with the soil anyway. And what's next to the skin is going to be relatively protected. So the places where you're going to see the dirt, I don't know if you can see that. Here, I'll just pull one off. But the places where you're going to see the dirt would be the tip from the last shearing. So when the sheep was shorn, it was probably shorn maybe leaving that much fleece on the sheep. And then the very next day, the sheep would have rolled probably as soon as it was done shearing, knowing how animals are. And it would have gotten dirt in there. And if the dirt wasn't washed out immediately, it would just stay there and get caked on. So you can kind of tell that the last shearing probably took place right at the bottom of this dirt line there. And it looks like a piece broke here. Technically that's still long enough for me to work with, but I'm going to like throw it out because first of all I got plenty of fleece, I don't really need that piece. But second of all, it's not really long enough to comb. So you might be wondering, okay, if the underside is so clean, what are you looking for again? <laughs> Second cuts. See, when the shearer shears the sheep, it doesn't really matter how good they are at shearing, there's going to be places where they go back and clip again, and that leaves short bits that we call second cuts. And you really just don't want those in the fleece. The sooner you get rid of them, the less trouble you're going to have later. And every once in a while you see a piece of veg matter that works its way to the bottom too. You know, that can happen during shearing, during the packing stage, just any, any time that hay has access to the bottom of the fleece you might get a little bit of veg matter on the bottom. It's just part of it. Just part of it. And the second cuts really aren't that horrendous. Here. I just want to kind of quickly as possible sort of go over the whole fleece. Pull out any little neppy things. My hands are getting coated in lanolin. It kind of feels good and kind of feels waxy. In fact, in the Facebook group that I'm involved in, which is called A Spinner's Study, is actually, there's a lot of people who have scoured Merino and have really complained about how hard it is to get all the lanolin out. So, I'm thinking that since I'm going to be combing it, you know, I do want to get as much lanolin out as possible, but I'm thinking I may just worry about getting the dirty tips clean more than getting lanolin out. Because some of the lanolin being in the fleece is going to help with static. And since I'm going to be blending it with alpaca, the lanolin might be helpful for that too. So I'm going to try, if possible, to get away with scouring it once and maybe like two rinses just to you know get the worst of the dirt and stuff off and then after I spin it when it's time for me to set the yarn I'm going to use some maybe some more power scour or something just to try to break up the lanolin a little bit more Normally when I finish my yarns, I finish them in wool wash. But anyways, one of the things you want to look for are really poopy, nasty bits like this. Yeah, I probably could clean it, but it would be a real headache. And it's not going to affect the overall amount of fleece that much. 
And yes, it was skirted before I got it, but it's really easy to miss stuff. But this is also another pretty big clue that the tail was over there. Because that's where the poop comes out. So that's nice to know. And that'll be good to keep in mind because that's what I'm going to want to practice on. So I'm going to have to keep that separate. I'm just going to finish flipping this over. And now that I know that this section here is the tail, I can separate it out and label it as such. Because what I'm going to do with the tail, and probably not even all of the tail, um, but that's what I'm going to use for experiments. Yeah, more poopy stuff over here. So this, ooh, this little bit here that I originally identified as the tail, I'm pretty sure I was correct. Pretty sure. Could be totally wrong. You know, Mr. McMurray could see this video. Uh, we are friends on Facebook, so that's not too far fetched. <coughs> Really, Woody? In the middle of my video. Sorry, that's my uh, sister-in-law's dog. And he sees something that he deems to be a threat to the family, and he's alerting the whole world about it. Literally. <laughs> Anyways. So again, I'm mainly just looking for second cuts and apparently poop tags. And if poop grosses you out, I'm sorry. You may click off this video at any time. <laughs> if you're wondering what's going on with my wrist, um, you could probably tell by looking at me, but if you can't, I am pregnant. I am getting close to my third trimester, I think. I've lost track of how many weeks I've been pregnant. Honestly, it's my second child, so, you know, done this all before. And I've also got other things to worry about besides how far along I am. But I am due in June, and it's going to be April day after tomorrow. So, I'm getting very close to the third trimester. I am noticing a few more second cuts at this end. Um, so the shearer probably did a lot of going back and trimming some more. And I imagine the tail area is difficult to trim anyway because sheep are cap capable of wagging their tails. And if they're trying to protect themselves, they might tuck their tail under, which would make it particularly difficult, I would imagine to get a good cut. But what's really nice is the second cuts on this are pretty, pretty teeny tiny. Like, that's about the length of them. Um, a poor shearer would like chop off half the fleece on you or half the staple length. So, although I imagine that a farmer that has been doing this a, a few years, as I suspect Mr. McMurray has, he may have been doing this most of his life for all I know, um, they know what to look for when hiring shearers. And a lot of farmers will do a lot of shearing themselves just to cut down on cost. And when you do it yourself, you don't have anybody else to blame for your mistakes but yourself. But when you've got a really large herd, sometimes it helps to have a professional shearer around. I don't know how big his herd is, but it looks like he's got quite a bit of acreage on his property. You know, there are some people out there and some animal rescues that think it's kind of cruel to use sheep for their wool. 
But the thing is, the sheep have to be shorn anyway, and it's kind of wasteful not to use their wool, if it's usable. Sometimes the only thing it's good for is, you know, fertilizer, depending on how poor quality the fleece is. But there's a, such a thing as the symbiotic relationship, and, you know, fleece grow the wool, or sheep grow the fleece, and they can't get rid of it themselves. Most sheep do not shed, which means, you know, somebody's got to take it off for them, or else they'll die of heat exhaustion. So to me, it just seems kind of wasteful to have an animal and then not do something with the fleece. It's my personal opinion. Because it's there anyway. You know, you're going to put the same amount of work in. You may as well at least make ends meet. And in fact, from what I hear, you know, unless you've got specific, a very well-known fancy breed like Merino here, um, there's generally not a whole lot of money to be made in fleece. At best, a lot of farmers might be able to make ends meet by selling fleece, and that would be about it. The real profit, unfortunately, comes in meat. And possibly milk, because there's a lot of um, versatility in milk. So anyways, I've got this bag here. I think I can stuff it all into the bag. And I wrote out a label. It's not pretty, but it tells me um, the micron, the breed, and where I got the fleece from, and what part of the animal I believe it is. fleece in a cotton bag and then put it in an airtight container but I plan on getting to this fleece pretty quickly and I don't exactly have a great abundance of cotton bags so I tend to use everything I've got in my house <laughs> there's a dog over here chewing on some alpaca that I skirted off yesterday the dog's name is Woody he's a a mix between a blue tick hound and a great dane. So he's a big boy. And look, more second cuts. So, hopefully, I can stuff this all down in the bag here. There we go. There, I did it. And I'm going to stick this into the bag. Now, the real trick is going to be telling apart the shoulder from um, the middle section. Because there's really not a whole lot of tails other than the shoulder would have like sort of protrusions coming off the side of it. Um, and for all I know, this might be the shoulder and what's in the thing is actually the back of the sheep. Woody, please don't eat that. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and roll this up, and I'm going to put that in a bag without a label, since I don't actually know what part of the sheep it is. And I will very briefly show you the other portions of fleece and let you know what part I think it might possibly be. And then I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> Anyways, I don't really have a clue what part of the sheep it came from. As I was kind of thinking about it, I was kind of thinking that the shoulder area and the tail area would be the two largest 
sections of fleece because the shoulder kind of, you know, the sheep's on all fours, the shoulder kind of covers all of this and part of the leg as well as maybe some of the chest. And it looks like there's a piece here that wraps around something. And over here, there's a little protrusion that might possibly be a shoulder. Um, so again, I'm not 100% sure why it's in different sections like this, but I've got a couple of guesses. First of all, it happened during shearing. It just sort of either fell apart or that's just what the shearer likes to do. Maybe it's how the owner keeps track of it better. Or in shipping, it fit in the box better if he just broke it into smaller pieces and then shoved parts on top of parts. He did give me an intact fleece, though. But honestly, even if I could unroll the whole thing, this skirting table's not big enough for that. Which is quite a bummer, because I thought I had made a pretty big skirting table. Anyways, what I'm looking for, again, is vegetable matter. Another thing I might want to do is test for weakness. And that is a very weak tip. But anyways, I was just really excited about getting this fleece. And I'm still pretty happy with it. A little bit of a bummer about the tips, but my son is also out here, so I've got to keep an eye on him as well as skirt this fleece. And I would like to get the whole thing, if possible, out of the box and into individual bags. But I'm going to guess that this is one shoulder, just because of that little protrusion down there. But anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want, give it a like, a little thumbs up, and uh, subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Facebook at Amy Spindle Spun Yarn. And I also have a website coming out, and I'll put a link to the description in that, and a link to the description. I'll put a link to that website in the description box below. And again, I hope you've enjoyed this very rambly video. I'll try to edit most of the rambles out if possible. And I hope this kind of gives you some pointers as to what to look for when buying a fleece. Always, if possible, buy in person and again, check the tips. You don't want to pull very hard. But you do want a little bit hard. And I'm thinking that this dark place here might actually be a break in the fiber. Yeah. Sounds like that might be a break in the fiber. This is the only one I've seen like this. I don't know. Already these are starting to seem a little bit stronger and better. Overall, because the fiber didn't completely break, I just heard a little bit of crackling, which made me nervous, but I think it's fine. I think it'll be fine. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. It was really great chit-chatting with you and showing you my new play toy, if you will. And I will catch you later. In the meantime, happy crafting and God bless.